I just found something that said, uh, you, you're quoted as saying in talking to Real America's Voice um, that whereas January 6th was just a riot at the Capitol, and if you think what our Declaration of Independence says, it says to overthrow tyrants. So do you think that the assault on the Capitol was a legitimate exercise of uh, popular insurrection? Oh, Mr. Raskins, I, I know it's early in the morning, but this is the Rules Committee. This isn't your Trump derangement committee the, that you call the January 6th committee. As Congress was gearing up to pass the first major gun restriction bill in 30 years, Marjorie Taylor Greene was busy getting snarky during a hearing on red flag gun laws. As much as the Georgia Congresswoman may have thought that she took the win with her behavior this morning, I can definitely confirm that the hearing did not go well for her. Welcome into TYT's Overruled. I'm your host, Adrian Lawrence. Today, Marjorie Taylor Greene joined the Rules Committee to oppose red flag gun laws, like those that allow judges to remove guns from the possession of individuals who pose a danger to themselves or others. During her testimony, Greene had a heated confrontation with Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin. Of course, it came when he asked her about guns in connection with the insurrection on the U.S. Capitol. Here's the rest of that exchange. My last name doesn't have an S on it, Ms. Oh, Green's. I apologize, okay. Mr. So, Raskin. Okay, you've been talking about the Second Amendment. You came here to talk to us about the Second Amendment, I right? talk. I'm here to talk and about so, due process rights and protecting Americans' okay. due process rights. All yes. right, so I, I just want to be clear. You've been quoted at least as saying that the January 6th uh, riot at the Capitol was in the spirit of the Declaration of Independence, which says you can overthrow tyrants. You've also testified that people have a right to carry guns, presumably wherever they want to go. So it seems to me that uh, lots of people were armed on that day, but the logic of your argument is that everybody could have been armed and brought their weapons with them. And I, I'll take that I, what as a evidence you, What evidence so, do you have that a lot of people were armed that day? Oh, Mr. Raskin, do you it, have that to, to introduce oh, into the record? Just wait for it. But, but <laughs> when, when it comes out, presumably you'll be supporting it, right? That they, they would have a right to have guns and knives with them. Is that right? Mr. Raskin. Is that your position? Uh, no, Mr. Raskin. Well, no, again, I'm going to ask I the think, questions here because this I is think, the Rules Committee. You're not a member of the Rules Committee, Ms. Green. Are you? I'm a witness. Are you a member of the Rules Committee? I'm a witness here at the Rules okay, Committee. Okay, so I'm asking, let me just ask you a that question. That is talking about due process rights, not, not your uh, lies about January 6th, about President okay. Trump and others. Okay. I, I, didn't mean, I never mentioned him. You've brought him up. I am not shocked at all that Green is trying to play fast and loose with the facts such that it will support her bastardized Second Amendment argument. And do you want to know what that argument is? Well, basically, Green opposes red flag laws, which have been shown to reduce gun violence and suicides by significant numbers. Despite the evidence, the congresswoman from Georgia believes that we shouldn't restrict access to guns at all. And here is her reasoning why. The reality that we all have to have to recognize we have to live with is that there's nothing that any of us can do, there's no law that we can create that can change the heart and the mind of another human. See, people have been killing other people since the beginning of time, and this was long before guns were ever invented. And it will continue to go on and on in places where people don't have guns to defend themselves. Murder still exists. Yes, MTG believes it's going to be futile to restrict high-capacity magazines and warlike weaponry because people have always killed people, even before guns were invented. That's a really interesting argument because, as far as I'm concerned, MTG's point seems to completely ignore the fact that access to firearms, high-capacity weaponry, it's all associated with an increased number of murders and suicides. We just witnessed that as a, there was a mass shooting that killed 21 people, including 19 children at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. So what about the children? Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene has an answer on how to protect them in schools, too. And I also feel that, uh, you know, if my children are in school and a madman with a gun comes to a school to kill people, uh, unfortunately, a psychologist is not going to be able to just talk him out of it. That, that is, is not a good way to protect kids. But again, we but enjoy- Do you think the students should be armed? Uh, I think children should be trained with firearms. I definitely do. I think that's very important so that they understand. The so they could repel someone. Let's be real here. Individuals like Green are not here to save lives or even practice common sense as far as I'm concerned. She's been endorsed by the NRA since at least 2020, enjoying her A rating. And the only way that she's going to be stopped is if she's voted out of office coming this next election. 
But will the 14th congressional district in Georgia actually do something? Its only other option is to elect Democrat Marcus Flowers. Of course, the district has been Republican for at least the past decade, so I don't know that that's going to happen. What do you think? You let me know in the comments below. Hit that like and follow button. And thanks for watching.